Hello, and thank you for checking out this episode of Portal's Podcast. This week we got something very special for you. You know, we are missing the connections of seeing each other face-to-face, heart-to-heart, giving each other those embraces, that special connection that happens when we're at gatherings or festivals and retreats. But 2020 has pretty much pulled the plug on, I'd say, 99.9% of them. But there's a dedicated group of people all around the world who are still holding that line, still trying to help us connect and make sure that we have the opportunity to at least learn the lessons and take those moments that we need to be aware, to be present, and to just feel the love. Misha Eli has dedicated 2020 to creating the Earth Dance Asheville event, which will be found online at Earth Dance TV. All right, let's have a couple words with Mr. Eli. You're listening to Portal's podcast, an extension of the Emergence Creative Space. Listeners are transported into the hearts and minds of some of the most inspired creators, producers, artists, and activists around. Portal's is a platform and a spotlight on people, organizations, businesses, and more who are the unsung heroes making a huge impact on the lives of others. My name is Scott Love, and I will be your host on this journey into the powerful world of intention and conscious creation. I am an activist, an entrepreneur, and a visionary. Over the years, I've made some incredible relationships with a lot of truly epic people. Many have helped inspire me and have guided me on my journey. I believe they'll help you as well. Here's what's up. We are a people in transition. The choices we make now will affect lives for generations to come. Our choices will be our legacy. I want Pearl's podcast to be a go-to resource for those who are searching for solutions and to help us move us all forward. Thanks for being here. All right, let's get inspired. Two, three. All right. Hello, Misha. What's going on, brother? Hey there, Scott. How are you doing? I'm doing great tonight. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Tell me about it. What, what's going on? We're three nights out before Earth Dance weekend. Okay. Earth Dance Asheville is happening this weekend, and uh, it's really exciting. We have presenters from pretty much all around the world involved with earth dance on a global level so yeah that's what i'm up to that's really exciting i remember when we first started talking about you being involved with earth dance and bringing it from florida up to Asheville. that that was really really cool i was really excited for you and so i was also really bummed out when because i was looking forward to going to it i was also really bummed out that you know you're not able to actually physically have it in space well nobody is as far as i know that's pretty cool man that you decided to keep going with it. Because I was, I canceled 3D up. And I, for a while, I thought about doing a virtual thing. And I was like, I don't really know if I want to put that much effort into something right now, other than this podcast and the Emergence Creative Space. Uh, what was that all like for you? Well, the transition initially was a new way of seeing it, changing my perspective. So just to kind of d- give some of the details, since 1997, Earth Dance has been hosting the largest sync synchronized annual gathering for peace. Producers from over a thousand locations in over 80 countries have presented thousands of DJs and artists of mixed media forms to a global community through hub events. That's that so happened, badass. Like you said, like for in Florida or like Uganda, London, San Francisco, et cetera, et cetera. So these, these events have also supported charities worldwide and what's cool is that it happens during the fall equinox every year and it's also uh, aligned with the global united nations world peace day observance and that happens uh se- you know september the 21st every year so we've got multiple different alignments with ngos npos independent hub event producers that are activated to do this. And so the idea, of course, was pre-COVID pandemic to do an event along the Netahela over here in the Asheville area. Very cool. And I, I had reserved the area so that we could have a Skillshare and a family-oriented type of an event, mixed demographic. Everybody basically brings their uh, stones to the soup, eliminating the, the ticketing, eliminating those types of entity ships and creating a grassroots gathering in Cherokee land in National Forest property here in Asheville. That is so cool, dude. Thank you, Scott. 
and I got the signal from Earth Dance Global Coordinator that we needed to shut down operations on the in-person events. And so we fused that and into resource development towards recognizing that we needed to convey the same types of information in a new type of setting. And that setting we found to be the new domain in particular of earthdance.tv that's hosting all of the interactive events for Earth Dance this year. So we're excited about that as well. And it's been busy, busy, busy. So even yes, though sir. nothing's going on, everything's <laughs> going on. Yes, sir. That's very cool. Yes, sir. Man, that's, that's all pretty awesome. Is there anything that you're really looking forward to with the virtual event? Yeah, to give a little uh, idea of what's happening, that this year we have, of course, the Prayer for Peace, which happens at 7 p.m. Eastern Time or 12 p.m. London Time, 4 p.m. San Francisco Time, or 12 a.m., pardon me, uh, London Time, 4 p.m. San Francisco Time. This Prayer for Peace is the global synchronization. So that's always the focal point of what we do. Participants, they gather worldwide for this prayer, and we have a synchronized moment of intention, and we have a guided meditation this year that's being done with sound healer and the musician and you know guided visuals that people can tap into on the live stream on earthdance.tv. A friend of mine, Fantuzzi, he's gonna be emceeing the San Francisco stream. And I'm excited about nice. that. Uh, we've got M Fantuzzi. Fantuzzi. Yeah, he's great, he great nice. guy. And so he gives his own character. He's, he's just his own character. We have some great characters that are keeping the stream going. And over the years, we've had participants like Erica Badu, Michael Franti, you know, like, some really talented individuals, desert dwellers that wow. you and I, Scott, we've worked with, you know, over the years. So, yeah, it's exciting. Um, this Prayer for Peace program is just one of five live streams, and the streams are still coming in. So the idea to go and host one's own activation for Earth Dance, whether it be a house party or a gathering at the park or on a boat... However, people want to go and gather and support this international convergence, their right. opportunity is still open. And they can go into earthdance.tv to find out more. Yet for right us... On. Is there any is there any cost associated with it? Uh, for featuring events, of to feature one's own production, like three days away from the event happening. There, no, 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 no. For the, for the spectator oh, no, 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 no. to watch... Oh. The opportunities are designed in multiple tiers of engagement. Okay. The opportunities go from being present on earthdance.tv to our Earthdance Asheville Twitch feed to okay. integrating on Facebook with the commentary audience and integrations with one another through the Facebook community to immersing oneself into our extended reality that we are supporting. This is something unique that we're doing out of the Asheville community. We've partnered yeah. up with XR developers to develop a unique beta test, if you will, for how to provide an extended reality experience at festivals for individuals online and on the World Wide Web. So explain that, extended reality. What is that? Like, what does that? What does it mean? It basically means if you're familiar with concepts like like Sim City or okay. or Second Life, even if you've been exposed to the Oculus uh, right, type, right. type of a virtual reality headset immersion experience, uh, you have the opportunity, and in this case, via your cell phone, via your uh, personal computing device like a laptop, or via your Oculus, via your virtual reality headset or other hardware that you might want to incorporate to immerse yourself into the Earth Dance experience over okay. the three days that we will be hosting Earth Dance Asheville this year. So am so, I am I getting that it's it's like a it's like a second life experience where they like they get to play the game be a, a uh, avatar exploring this festival? Absolutely. That absolutely. that is happening. That's absolutely what's happening, Scott. Dude, that That's is what... so awesome. Thank you. That's exciting. Man. It's, I, I wanna, it's... Dude, I, I'm so excited because I love that idea. I just got introduced to Second Life. I knew it existed, but in this downtime, 
downtime, right, of, of being under whatever the staying home thing is, I got into it. I only, I, oh, I downloaded it. I actually just took it off my computer because I was only into it for like two days. Right. And I just realized right then that I could lose myself in this if I, if I, if I wasn't mindful of it. So I just It's true. Didn't. It's true. And, and the idea is that in order to immerse oneself into this experience, they need to be conscious of their technical specifications and capabilities. So okay. as, we're, as we're going So only into, certain systems will be able to have this experience. This experience is open to phone to personal computing device like a laptop or a desktop okay. or to a Oculus or other type so of So pretty much any virtual. media can watch it. Pretty much, yeah. Cool. Okay. Very good, very good. So you just told me this really cool quote, and I'd like to share it with people. Yeah, Scott. Uh, from my understanding, it was the great Napoleon Hill that said something to the tune of people want to know how much you care before they care how much you know that's awesome that's so true brilliant brilliant i wonder like like authors like napoleon hill and stephen covey you know who wrote these really ground breaking books napoleon hill that was was that think and grow rich yes and then okay. stephen covey was the seven habits of highly effective people yes i love that book dude the program i worked at a summer camp program for at-risk youth for like 17 years and well 15 years but it was over like 17 years training was based on helping our campers experience life with all their their goodness on display like we completely forget about the fact that they have quote unquote things going on and we just work with them and celebrate them all the time and our training, part of our training is studying from the seven habits of highly effective people. And that was a program that was created by a Barbara Vetter called Silverman Village. And an amazing program that ran for decades. And who was my mentor, has worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of children over the years. You know, she's gone now. She passed a couple of years ago, but she was amazing. You know, one of, the, one of the people who changed my life for sure. There's no telling what would have happened in my life had I not met Barbara when I was... 21 years old because yeah, before yeah. that i was i was a hellraiser all right but hey barbara vetter stephen covey and that quote um let me see if i can remember it people, people want to know that people want to know how much you care before they care how much you know word good knowledge good. knowledge does not designate the ultimate understanding of relationships with human beings with one another it's related to trust. It's related to loyalty. It's related to virtues that we've understood in our various cultures for years and years. Right. And even though we redefine ways of communicating those same virtues through a variety of platforms, we still have that universally accepted that we, we recognize nonverbal communication before we recognize verbal communication. Right. And nonverbal communication is exemplified in behavior, in the way that we treat one another, in the way that we adhere to golden rule mentality, or not, All right. or not. And it shows through, it shows through, so, yeah. It's awesome, it's awesome. Because, you know, it, I'll be 50 years old tomorrow, dude. And it's crazy, in fact, is it midnight? I might be 50 now, I don't think it is. Um, almost scott almost <laughs> almost it's a milestone for one i didn't think i was gonna live this long uh but for two i'm learning so i'm like the stuff i'm learning about myself and about life and about community and appreciation and relationships it's i'm such a different level now because i'm older i've slowed down i don't have to be in a rush anymore i don't have shit to prove you know i don't have to chase tail I don't have to do anything because all I want to do is a room, zoom, zoom. Oh, you know, uh -oh, brother. Uh -oh. but all I want to do is, is, is get to know art and work on this podcast and get to know you better. Hey, you were talking, Thank you, you mentioned working on new ways to communicate. You also mentioned in a conversation we had prior to the recording this about a woman that, you know, that is working on, if I remember you correctly, an alternative form of communication her name her name's jay wow jay wow right her name's jay wow and and jay wow is i just call her my badass mama 
No, there is the, she 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 is she is nothing less than an amazing living human being and an exemplifier of the willingness to leave a legacy and the willingness to activate a culture that doesn't gentrify, it doesn't isolate, it doesn't put into boxes to categorize, to go and develop some sort of a means of separation. Yeah, it's a culture that encourages collaboration. The culture and the, the idea of a new language, for example, that I'm learning myself as I immerse into this. That's uh, what it was, that's what it was. Developing a new language, yes. It's a new language. And and the idea, for example, would be like, and this is a type of a concept, is that like instead of the two of us, Scott, as we talk on the phone, having this podcast, you know, like chit-chatting, doing our thing, recognizing that we're having like a brainstorm and seeing that we're in some sort of a brainstorm, why brainstorm instead of brain bliss? Our ability to see that our communication is a blissful state and that it raises our excitement and enjoyment and activation potential is supporting us. Yet if we see it in our mindsets as a storm, it's bad weather. It's a way of perspective. It's so a new does way. it have anything to do with uh, neural programming? It does because of behavioral reconstitution to action to thought. So, like, for example, the idea of neurocognitive restructuring therapy, NCRT, is based on, and this spans across everything from, like, the gestalts and various different schools of psychology, yet from my understanding, the integration is that if you train, retrain behavior, you retrain action, you retrain thought. And so the same goes with the idea of meditation in the other direction of if you retrain thought, then you retrain action, then you retrain right. your behavior, and thus your habits become different. And so it's, it's cool. basically like a key across multiple, multiple different schools of psychology and also you know, spiritual practices to be able That's to awesome. be mindful to be mindful and to get oneself back into check. Cool. Where would people find out more about that? Does she have a website that you know? She does. It's a www.planetjwow.com. Nice. Very it's good. a place for you. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm going to check that out. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to check that out. It sounds very interesting. Cool. Uh, where do I know that name from? Jaywow? Does, does, she, does she do other events? Oh, yeah. I mean, she's an international speaker, you know, developing podcasts and you know, really, I would divert to people checking out her stuff without trying yeah, yeah. to go and speak her up right now. Nice, nice. I would go and... That's good. Go straight to the source. Yeah, yeah. Word. That's awesome, man. What's going on in Asheville with uh, Earth Dance? So... Like, if I check it out, how, first of all, I check it out, I go to earthdance.tv, and then is there an option of going to the Asheville branch of that, or do people have to go to another site for that? Basically, if you want to get into Earth Dance... Asheville experience, it depends on what medium you want to use. Okay. So we've got set up earthdance.tv as the main site for the entire event. We've got Twitch that's feeding through to Earthdance. We've got Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and the XR Universe. So do people have to bounce around different medias to follow the event, or is there a single people, portal where it's all? What's that? Earthdance.tv. Yeah. is the main portal for our live stream, for what we're feeding through in our live stream. Okay. And the Facebook page is the main event communications portal where we, where we have learned and continue to learn how to link up our communities with one another through our nice. groups or through our pages or through our other social media like Instagram, and everybody YouTube. has access to Facebook. Instagram. Yeah, for the most part, they have access to it. So it's our, it, that's our main communication stream uh, in general, while the live feed can best be attuned to through earthdance.tv and our Asheville designation. Or people can check out all the other uh, pr produced events for Earthdance. They're, at this point, there are five of them that are taking place around the world, uh, as well as ours in Nashville. 
and it's all running through that earthdance.tv stream. So is so, there going to be like a map or is there like a list or? You can check in and there's drop down menus and means to go directly into the portals of integration. So yeah, so yeah, yeah, all through earthdance.tv. So Earthdance Global is really hooking us up in Asheville with the opportunity to showcase the presenters that we have in a global format alongside presenters from all around the world, that which is, so is good, great. It's great. And when we go, you know what's really what would be really cool is if they kept that going after COVID. You know, everyone just puts up a camera in their in their festival. Yeah, and they can just switch the feeds. So yeah. no matter where you are, and that's yeah. the idea, Scott. I, I, not not to cut you off. Yeah, that's exactly it. Because of the idea of having a domain like a dot TV or dot world outside of a dot com. Right we are already redefining the way that we communicate our information with one another. We're developing our .nets, our .tvs, our .world extension domains with the idea of creating our own infra networks that are year round. Uh, a network like earthdance.tv, those of us at Earthdance Global and affiliated producers with this year's event are already looking at opportunities for us to engage in a year-round basis with collaborators. Awesome. That is so cool, dude. That's some really cool stuff. I'm happy you're doing this, Misha. It is, uh, it, it's good to see you. I've known Misha since 2013. We met at my, one of my all-time favorite events, which was Gratify. That was the first one or the second one? It was one, I believe, Scott, when I first yeah. went, because I believe we came up and we were installing the Labyrinth of the Unbroken Path. Yes. And I camped, I camped out with you and a couple other homies and stuff that I got introduced to up there on that trail, like yes. all that Rocky One trail where, where we were. Yeah. It was 2013 when yes. Tribal Council first threw the first experience down there in uh, Avalon, Westminster, South Carolina. Right yeah, on Lake yeah. Avalon. Was, was Gratify, I didn't think Gratify was, I know Tribal Council, yeah, you know, they, they it was pretty much, it was the whole group. Of that. The whole Asheville crew is so tight, man. You know, a lot of them have helped with 3DL over the years, too. It's awesome, man. It's like the community is supporting each other. That's what I, I miss about Asheville. And I, I look at the people on the lineup for what you're doing, and it's it's, a lot of them are friends. Now, did you bring in scott sterling a uh, drum spider or was that somebody that he's just part of the global actually scott i'm grateful that i did bring in our friend scott sterling drum spider aka to this event he i believe also played at that gratify 2013 years ago uh dixon was there if i'm not mistaken he was there too uh scott yeah, was it, was, it was either gratify or the connection camp out right well, maybe both of them that i got turned on to i think i think scott i think scott's played out both and he's going to be playing on saturday night he's actually playing at around 10 p.m he's closing it out on saturday night after the prayer for peace at seven and a few different acts we've got him set up he's out of berkeley california and I'm super grateful that we have him affiliated with what we're continuing to do from the emergency experience back, what, two years ago? Yeah, man. To what we're doing now with Earth Dance. Yeah, man. And, I can't believe yeah, it's been two years so already. he's supporting Earth Have you seen the, uh, the Celtic Earth thing yeah, he's been doing? Yeah, man, he's totally, uh, he's, already, he's already communicated with me about what he's up to with the set. It's super up close and personal. It's like in your face set. Nice. It's beautiful. It's beautiful type of a thing that he's orchestrating to uh, do this live right. stream. And really, all these presenters, they're doing things out of their studios. They're doing things out of their backyards. They're doing things out of their bedrooms. Like they're doing things from all over the place to go and share their messages with this global community. <laughs> Is that, if, if there's been any silver lining, there's been a number of silver linings, but the chance that we get to explore this technology of virtualness, you know, while it's nothing I want to hold on to for a long, long time, it's cool that we just immediately find solutions as, as a community, as a people. 
you know, the desire to connect, even though we can't give each other a hug, cheers right now, we still have this. And people are opening, and I'm so happy because I'm entertained all the time. So many new podcasts happening. I'm being exposed to new artists more now than I was before pandemic because, you know, I have nothing to do at Thursday at 7 in the evening. Uh, you know, and I'm scrolling down Facebook, and there's a somebody playing. Yeah, you I'll got just a watch it, party. See if I like got, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And that's it's what cool. we're orchestrating now, uh, developing with Star Horizon XR and XR Labs. And if people do want to tune in to that type of like immersion and kind of like go that cyber future tech level, they can. And I'll tell you, the website is StarHorizonXR.OzoneUniverse.com. So that would be the way amongst Twitch, EarthDance.TV, Facebook, Instagram, all of these different portals that I'm in the process of developing with the developers to make it a place where everybody around the world can integrate with what we're doing through EarthDance Asheville, connected with the EarthDance global community. So what is that since Facebook is going to be the communications portal, kind of like the spine of what's going on, if you will. What is the Facebook page that people need to check out? Just go on Facebook and check out Earth Dance Asheville. As soon as you put up okay. Earth Dance Asheville, it'll say Earth Dance Asheville 2020, and that's us. Okay. That's, that's, that's our uh, communication link, our community link with what we're integrating as an ongoing platform right now. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna shift the direction for a second because you, you know, we were just talking about how technology and these Zoom accounts and the Facebook live stream has really shifted how we view entertainment and how we communicate. I am also profoundly impressed with how it also made the uprisings so permanent in people's like millions and millions and millions of more people were exposed to the uprisings and the the protests and the anger and they saw why people were angry. You know, now that these shootings are being exposed and all this stuff, people are seeing it. So in a weird way, this media has influenced our culture for the good, I believe, because everyone feels the protests. Whereas they're not just watching it for five seconds or for a two minute blast on the news. Exactly. They're actually watching the protest as they evolve on your exactly. fucking computer. Exactly. And that's one thing that we're providing through this weekend's experience is we have correspondents and presenters that are in Puerto Rico, in Asheville, in places like DC, in Boston, that are activating what's taking place right here and now. In Puerto Rico, they've been exposed to earthquakes, to hurricanes. It's an island, a great, right. a great part of our presenter base, particularly on Sunday. You guys that are listening to this podcast, got to check it out. Sunday, we're going to have the Caribbean Coalition. We've got Domingo Tropical. So we have collaborators that are coming into our conversations through Asheville. Conversations? Conversations. This is a JWOW. <laughs> this is one of those JWOW vocab terms. Okay. So again, check out planetjwow.com to get more ideas of how you can restructure your vocabulary into a new dimension huh. of this format. Yeah. And then you can start having yeah. conversations with your friends. Yeah, 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 you have conversations with your friends and you empower yeah. one another. And so- and let me see, because we were talking about how it's a phonic implant. That's the way I think of language. No, it's like spell casting. That's putting it. Yeah. You know what I mean? A phonic implant. So a conversation as opposed to a conversation, because a conversation, you're conning each other. Uh -huh. but with a conversation, you're supporting each other's dreams and aspirations. Fucking get it, babe. That's beautiful. Yes, yeah. Scott. Yes, yes. <laughs> so we have these conversations that are being activated in our presentations through our Zoom calls through our Twitch fed broadcast, through the opportunity to engage in a unique, immersive, extended reality platform. And we're really excited to be doing this and doing it also live. So when you say about like how the movement is progressing with the protests, we're doing a protest through dancing during Earth Dance. Nice. That's what this whole celebration putting, putting is about. Putting vibes out there, shifting exactly. the vibration of the planet. Exactly. 
Exactly, because like I said, we've got Uganda on deck, London on deck, San Francisco with all of the fires and the coastal issues that they've been having recently on deck mm. to go and speak of and communicate solutions. We are the solutionaries to what is going on and what has been going on in our world as to realities that we can recognize practically. And Earth Dance is just one example to keep that conversation going. We're coming off the tail ends of Burning Man. Burning Man just happened. So Earth Dance traditionally has been a decomp for Burning Man fe uh, Festival, okay. if you might call it a festival. Right. So this is keeping all of the activators activated, coming from a lot of the same roots. As I said, it's been going on since 1997. So the entire production is a nonprofit aligned event. We have charities around the world. We have the Cherokee Preservation Foundation that Earth Dance Asheville in particular is aligned with. We have epilepsy associations, trust organizations, international groups that are a part of this movement. And the movement is only progressing forward, forward, further, further. So it's very exciting. That and, is freaking sweet, dude. Yeah. You know, I've, one of the things I've always been impressed by you is that you always have something going on. I remember when we first met and I was like, so tell me what you're into, man. I think 30, 40 minutes later, you, you took a breath. And, you know, well, uh -oh. it wasn't quite that. But I love you, Scott. Right? I just want to throw it in an I love you. There's an <laughs> I love you. That's a good one. Thank you. So you recognize what, it. What is your, uh, what, how did you, how did all, like this path, if, if what you're doing right now with Wow and with Earth Dance and in the Asheville community is where you're at now, take us on the treasure map of your life that led to this moment like the different experiences you had different projects stuff like that okay cool yeah ever, ever since i was a little kid i've always been involved with like arts education esoteric integration unique experience shit i remember i was maybe five years old and doing slides slideshow presentations on friday nights in front of my family nice. in the living in the living room what, so what, what, what we, were the slides so what are the topics man the topic were you doing the whole uh the uh, sacred geometry thing Not you breaking quite. down the power of the flower of life to your feet no at five years old i was taking my younger brothers that were 23 months apart than i was as the first born sibling and i was directing them into their roles to play and outfitting them with costumery my mom's makeup -ry, and what? whatever other assets I had that to be so able to... That is so fun. That is so fun. <laughs> and whatever other assets I had to be able to go and create a stage show for my family and other guests that we had. So yep. even even from then, I was doing that like pre-PowerPoint or pre-Google uh, present right, presentation. Right. <laughs> well, I was, I was thinking of it because it was, it was, it was scenes that you're acting out. It was more of like a slideshow graphic novel. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And we would go tell the stories of the present time of what was happening. If it was a holiday, like Thanksgiving, we would have like turkey costumes made out of paper mache that my mom would help build for like my classroom project. My, or mom, made, my mom was crafty too. My mom made me yeah. a Halloween costume. I wanted to be Batman. And we were on like a, you know, we, we didn't have a lot of money. So she couldn't really... Give me the. She can give me a plastic one, but I didn't want a plastic one. One of those cheap ass plastic Batman. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the masks that smell funky. Um, yeah. So she, out of cardboard and sheets and dye, she made me a badass, realistic Adam West Batman costume. Pimpin, dude. That was the Batman costume, straight up. Well, that's great. Yeah, my mom was awesome like that. So okay, so let's talk about your professional path then. Yeah. How did you get into? How did you get into all this? Because you dropped the Batman. And that's kind of where it all started from. About 10 years ago, I got this inspiration uh, handed to me. I would say in a sort of a neo-pagan sort of a way, I got the fire handed to me to be a fellow torchbearer, to be a light worker of sorts. And in that capacity, I recognized that I had connects across multiple media and social forms. What was the torch? Was there a label to it or is it just a movement? It, there was a label to it. A, a well, really what happened in, in allegory, I would say, 
If I was going to go back to the story about 2010, a friend of mine decided to go and start an organization called Spiral Enterprises. And okay. with that organization, we formed a business. And our main intention was to be able to become leaders in the forms of education and entertainment. So we would begin to go and employ leaders that we saw as like jewels in the lotus, up and comings, people that had talent that didn't know how to go and express themselves and get bookings and gigs and opportunities. And they saw a world of lack rather than a world of abundance. We started to share with them that fire spirit, that spirit of abundance, that spirit of like, so long as we have sun and we have moon, we have life. We have daytime reflection. And like tonight, we're on this podcast and we're speaking and we have nighttime reflection and it's helping us. And we respect that and we're getting that. So we wanted to share that with others. And it was almost like a calling at that point that I got it. And I got it through the idea of creating productions and, you know, supporting theme parties, getting involved with seminars, creating individual and group opportunities, and developing a network really of teachers, people that were artists, but educators were a network of educators, arts educators, teaching artists, that we motivate one another. We express ourselves, we get each other activated, we motivate each other, and we find a world of abundance rather than lack through what we do. And so I, I felt the calling to be one of those dudes, just kind of ministers this approach to our collective development. And this had come after, previous to the idea, the insight of developing this network. I was in holistic medical school. I was looking to be like an acupuncturist and a doctor of oriental medicine. And I became a physician of life and artistry rather than a physician of solely traditional Chinese or other different modalities of medicine. Okay. I, I expanded my approach to the idea of medicine about okay. 10 years ago. You know, it's, it's really interesting that it was about 10 years ago because uh, it was about, like I mentioned, it was about 10 years ago that I had hit, you know, the wave, the wave hit me. I had a job as a cook and I was, it was an okay job. I was able to pay my bills with it. Then one day I was outside chopping wood. It was about this time of year. It might have been a little later than this, like maybe October. I was outside chopping wood for the fireplace. While I was chopping wood, I saw this flash. And it was just like a like a star flash. It was just like, bink. And I, 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 I knew... <laughs> I knew what it was, man, because it was like like a moon drop. It was a no, moon it was, drop. It was, it was about it was about it was about eight feet off the ground, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, in front of me, but to the right a little bit. And as soon as it happened, I felt that something popped through, like something came in, something, not an entity, but it might have been an entity, an energy, an idea, or something. Uh, and I absorbed that energy. I became not to get all weird. Uh, I, get all weird it's fun you know Asheville you know, is the home of weird yeah dude yeah, it's, Asheville is the home of weird and I know as <laughs> I said that as I said that I also <laughs> felt like why the fuck am I explaining that it was weird it's not weird it's it's reality it's what happened so this flash exactly. of light happened and I felt this this energy come into me and I immediately started feeling I had to get people together now, to coincide with this, um, prior to this happening, I had discovered this website called starseeds.net. And I connected with this woman out of Puerto Rico. You were just talking about Puerto Rico, who was into Reiki. And it was like the first time I was really getting into it. And I was learning about it. And I heard about it through her. And it was like we had some really good conversation. I was learning a lot. She was like, my conversation. First Conversation. We were having a lot of conversations, and she really gave me a lot of information about conversations. Conversations. <laughs> no, come on now. So, um, <laughs> when I told her that I wanted to uh, connect with this character, this this being from my life when I was younger, um, like this this. Yeah, I'm gonna call it. It was like it was like a spiritual teacher. Uh, she helped me by taking me on this meditation, 
And in that meditation, I reconnected with this being who, when I say was in my dreams when I was younger, like a lot of my dreams, like I used to have dreams that I was being taught how to fly by this being. Yeah, brother. So that's, yeah, that's, that's right. So um, <laughs> I reconnected with this being about that same time. And then that flash happened. And it was from that point forward, I became obsessed with creating this event called the 11, 11, 11 gathering. And, right. and I'd never done anything like that before. But in that process of creating that event and the conver conversations that I had <laughs> and the people I was meeting, right? It was, it was, it led me on this path where all my shadow shit was amplified. And as long as I dealt with it, the next good thing would happen. Amen to that, Scott. Amen to that. And that's why we're having this conversation right yeah, now. Yes. So, it, that was about 10 years ago that my life shifted completely. Uh, before that, I had done a number of professional things. I created a community space. Uh, what kind of uh, community projects did you get into with uh, Spiral Enterprises? I could fit it into an acronym. Our work spans with the spiral. The spiral standing for special events, play shops, integrative design, referral programs, arts ed, and leadership training and, and so and so it over the years you say all that one more time one that more time sounded really good hearing you say it. it did okay the spiral is for s special events p play shops i integrative design r referral programs a arts education and L, leadership training. We've formed partnerships and collaborations over the years, over this span, with groups that are NGOs, nonprofit organizations, mainstream, mountain stream, underground, grassroots, plus, plus, you name it. And now, like I said, the uh, extended reality communities, which is a new paradigm for how we can uh, shapeshift our communications, our events, our integrations. Yeah, that's nice. that's what I've been up to. And yeah, yes, yeah, Scott, you said earlier we met through Gratify. Gratify was just one of those seeds. Yeah, Gratify has been a seed, and I'm grateful that several of the presenters on uh, Earth Dance Asheville 2020 are presenters that I met initially through that experience that we both had seven years ago at Gratify. So I'm excited about that. Very good, very good. I want to talk more about Earth Dance. What's, what's going on with the lineup? Well, Scott, uh, I think you'll get a kick out of this. The uh, programming starts at 11, 11 a.m. on Friday. And basically we're coming in with an introduction from our elders. I have several elders in the programming from various different spiritual and artistic communities that are going to be sharing their messages uh, in the programming. It's moving into uh, meditations, uh, hip hop vibes, down tempo musical sets, drum circles overnights. We're calling it the midnight around the fire experience. And so it gives everybody that's involved with the various streams of earth dance activity to engage with Zoom calls, with Facebook watch parties, uh, with interactive avatars immersed in XR platforms to experience the event. I've got presenters uh, from multimedia streams, various different conversations like we spoke of earlier and Asheville talent, as well as talent spanning from, like we spoke of Drum Spider to Alter Poets coming out of London uh, via Puerto Rico. So yeah, we got a lot. We nice. got a lot going on this weekend. And it's gonna, Jenna Gilmore's playing? Yes, we're very excited to have Jenna Gilmore, who has, she's doing a set right after the Prayer for Peace 
from around 7.30 as a start time on Saturday night. The Prayer for Peace, like I said earlier in the podcast, is happening at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And it's something that is basically the crux of everything that we're doing with Earth Dance. It's the largest synchronized global gathering for peace that we've been doing for 24 years. Nice. So it's, it's, a, so it's a very exciting time. Awesome. What speakers are you really looking forward to listening well, to? Well, Scott, earlier you were talking about your experience with uh, the 17-year programming with the youth camp and the youth engagement. And that's what really pulls my heart strings. I've been an arts educator. I've worked with multiple demographics and multiple age sets over the years. And personally, what really pulls my heartstrings is the kids. What's happening with the legacy that we're leaving through the work that we're all doing. One of my favorites on our lineup is my friend Aurora Moon, and she happens to be nine Aurora years Moon. old. Nice. Yeah, and she's doing a workshop, or as I call it now, a play shop in our experience uh, to share with the Earth Dance community about how to build mandalas how to be able to make mandalas using using uh, repurposed items and artifacts, cool. sacred, sacred materials that one can find around their own home or in their yard or in their national forest. Like we've got the blessing of having uh, up here in Asheville, places like that, uh, how to build a mandala to, you know, in intentionalize energy to to put it practical to develop an art piece and nice. like i said she's nine years old and i'm really excited to have her on this project because i've been working with her since she was four years old and uh previous to earth dance asheville she's been one of my my little homettes one of my nice. one one of my one of my really really great activators and one of those people that, you know, Scott and I, you know, you and I, we both got kids. We both got kids. So we see the impact that our work does in future generations. And uh, Aurora Moon, she's just like uh, exemplary of what we're doing with that. So nice. that's, she, she's one of the most exciting, as well as uh, spinning the ages with JWoww, like we spoke of, and Sangoma, you know, particularly empowered females, very empowered females that have already made impacts in the lives of global community. Those are the ones that I'm super excited to have on deck on this lineup. I'm really missing people. I'm missing going to festivals. I planned on like my plan was to head to Asheville. Plans, plans. Plans um, was to right. was to do or not do. There is no try, That's says up. Master Yoda. You speak of you being a Jedi, Jedi Scott. <laughs> I was really looking forward to creating 3DO. I yes. was really looking forward to it because me we too, had brother. We wanted to do this. Together for it. It's your birthday week. It is my, it's your well, birthday my birthday. Week. Is, yeah, my birthday is tomorrow, but I was gonna. It was gonna be in October, and because you because of the conversation that you and I had. About, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We had discussed that we wanted to fuse our forces together because we have such a lined endeavor. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to host 3DL this weekend. And then when you told me that Earth Dance was going to be this weekend, I was like, okay, and you'd already been planning it. We both have wanted to have in-person events. Yeah. And we wanted to dovetail them with one another. And we wanted to do this in the effort of building our mutual communities. As a result of what's taking place with our new restructuring of our communications, we're doing it this way. And it's still a blessing. It's still a blessing. Oh, it's very much a blessing, man. It's very much a blessing. It's very good. How has COVID affected your life in other ways? Wow. In, in other ways, well, I could say from personal experience that for the first time ever in 39 years, 
I was unemployed. Yeah. For, formerly unemployed. And to experience that and to realize that I had a new level of envisioning what I wanted to do with my life and how I wanted to dedicate my time. Because time is the one thing that we have in common. We all have 24 hours a day, 8,760 hours in a year. And how many hours in a year? 8,760 hours in a year. Okay. And we get to decide how we want to show up in each of those hours of our life. And so now through this pandemic and this new way of envisioning our lives and our responsibilities to what is being given to us and what what we're paying attention to as a glo- uh, global population of humans, we're now seeing that we can open up our avenues to communication through these streams. And it's okay. Yet the idea of being together in these huggings and cuddle puddles and all night rage fests and all these other festival engagements that we're used to. It's not a thing of the past, yet it's, in my opinion, being refined. Yeah. So that it's being refined so that when we do it as emissaries in a transformational music and arts movement, we're doing it the right way because we see virtue as the new conversation. I, I see this pandemic as a global humbling. Exactly. You know, we see like, virtue Virtue is the new conversation. We're, we don't pay necessarily donations, yet we pay respect through our contributions to another's life artistry and their individualistic endeavor to continue to stay alive and thrive. And we're doing that. Yet to make it collaborative in a, like it's spoken of in the, in the Planet JWoww language, a reciprocanomy where we are assisting one another to further our goals and initiatives and operations and dreams, et cetera, et cetera. We can do that. And while money is still around and used as capital and something that we recognize as something that we hold very, very dear in our understanding of where we need to invest our time. And so to like redefine that is kind of like what an event like Earth Dance and the vision that you have with the 1111 Emergence Experience, Emergence Creative Space, this is what it's all about. We're at it, we're at the forefront for this conversation. So it's very exciting. And like you said, humbling. It's the time to be humble, to recognize that we don't know anything, yet what we believe and find is true to our hearts and what we think is the most valuable in life, this is the time to shine in those domains. Yeah. What I was saying about it being humbling, from my perspective, is that people took so much for granted. And now you've had no choice. Most of us, a lot of people, you know, it didn't really affect their life much. We do miss these festivals and we appreciate them more. Like the next time we get together, we are going to appreciate that so much more. When we see our loved ones without worrying about getting them sick or getting sick from them, we are going to appreciate that so much more. And as a society, you know, we were spoiled. We could find any weekend to make any reason to gather together and throw a celebration. Right. And gather in numbers and strength in form, yet now our form has been revised. And so when we gather in strength in numbers, we're digitized to, you know, to go and make a little rhyme out of this bit. That's basically what's happening. We're digitizing what it was that we were doing. And I have been asked, like, even this evening, I had a conversation with one of our Earth Dance presenters. She's telling me, I wish we could be doing this in person. I miss our festivals. And I say, we're doing this the way that we can show up 
And like you said, Scott, we're, we're just activating what value we, we will have with one another when we can have and intend to have and feel safe mm -hmm. and comfortable in having our in-person engagements. And that's what I've been doing from the get-go with uh, Spiral Enterprises with community engagement. And this is just what's happening now. Right. And res responding to what's happening now. So moving forward, we're doing it. And very, I'm feeling very grateful for everybody that is feeling the vibe of wishing that we can be together. Scott, like we spoke of, like, I would wish for you to come down here this weekend to Asheville. <laughs> right, and we'll see how this one plays out in the final edit <laughs> right are you gonna be running it out of your space there or how are you what's your weekend like how are you doing this what's really cool about this from the production standpoint is i do not have to run a server okay which means that i too get to experience all of the opportunities for immersing with the Earth Dance community directly mm -hmm. without the need to go and run around or ride around in a golf cart attending from one need to another. I get to do it digitally from the comfort of my phone, laptop, or VR headset on this mm -hmm. experience. Tell me about what you have going on outside of Earth Dance. Like, what, once Earth Dance is over, what are you going to be focusing on? Yeah, I know, right? Like, that's the thing. When the festival's over, we all get there on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon, and we're like, oh, I've made so many new friends. I've had these peak experiences. What am I going to do with this all? And right. it's always, like, the big convo, right? So, for me personally... Convo or convo? Ah, you got me. Ah. You got me. Busted, Scott. Busted. <laughs> if JWoww's listening to this podcast, then she'll know I just got busted. So, yes, it's a Canva. In, the, in this Canva, we're continuing it into what we can do to create opportunities for each other to be successful. So, Scott, you and I, since we met, we've been encouraging one another to be successful. And I'm very grateful for that. Me we've, too. We found alignments with 3DL. We found an alignments through Gratify, Connection Campout, the Emergence Experiences. So next leveling what we're talking about, after Earth Dance on my end, I'm continuing to work with the presenters and the nonprofits and the NGOs that are aligned with the decomp of what it is that we basically just put out there in the airways. You know, we're doing a big project. We have, we have aligned organizations all around the world. So after Earth Dance, we're going to decomp a little. And as we move in, we're looking at new alignments, new partnerships, uh, potential organizations that are interested in experiencing, for example, like immersive realities, entertaining those interests and providing customizable platforms for them. And that's the Spiral Enterprises bit. Me, as a flesh and blood individual, I keep like carrying the torch up here in Appalachia. Yet as a business, continue to engage and empower one another, yourself included. So it, it, it's hopefully very aligned with what we've got going with our activation portals in social media and in in-person activation. So, yeah. That's amazing. That's fun. Thanks. That's Thanks. Fun. There's a lot of parallels between our, our visions, uh, you know, with uh, yours with Spiral Enterprises and mine with Emergence. And it's interesting that we both got that wave in 2010. We got lit and we got activated that we recognized that we had some continuing purpose as leaders and that our time would now be, speaking on the subject of time, dedicated to the activation of others and ourselves. <laughs> Do you have a personal mantra that you repeat to yourself or maybe a couple of them? Like I have a couple, but like, do you have, like, for example, uh, one that I say is I'm one of the light and love of God. I'm one of the light and love of the universe. 
and I say that many times, and then I switch it to we are one with the light and love of God, we are one with the light and love of the universe. And I just say that, and I say it, and I say it, and I say it, sometimes out loud, sometimes in my head, sometimes when I'm in the shower, sometimes when I'm driving, you know, if I'm at work and I'm, you know, I'm doing it in my head. And what it does is it just brings that to my focus. I'm saying it so many times. And then I break it down. I'm like, we, we, all of us, we are the light and love of the universe. We are the light and the love of God. It helps me relate to people differently too. It helps me be in, 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 a, in a kind of connection with them that whether they are consciously aware of it or not, I'm relating to the light that's inside of them as opposed to them, the person, because then the person can say anything. Then the person has a, a, a human exterior that they're trying to navigate through life, this weird thing called life, but their light inside of them, that's the connection. That, that's, that's the part that I see. And it's really challenging when the, the exterior person, the, the, the human form of that light is confused and angry and bitter, you know, and, and acts accordingly, you know, it, it helps me not have judgment as well. Do you have any personal mantras? Yeah, it's, it's funny you say that, Scott. I, uh, I've been involved for several years with a project called Mind, Body, and Soul Festival. Okay. Okay, with a, probably a mutual friend of ours by the name of Taz. Mm-hmm. And I met Taz at um, <laughs> Earth Dance when it was on the property there. At what, Maddox Ranch? Yes. Right. He was kind of our groundskeeper and ultimate security guard. That, that brother is a great guy. So, so with Mind Body Soul Festival, I remember like if it were yesterday that I was there at Maddox Ranch on the stage of Mind Body Soul Festival uh, several years back. And I was the MC for the event. And I'm grateful to have continuously been the MC for this really unique gathering, Mind Body Soul Festival out of Florida. And I was on the stage and it was um, Earth Day, I believe. And I was there and I was looking for inspirational guidance with a microphone right there in front of me as to what to say as I'm there on this cattle ranch, like in the middle of the woods, to go and hype up the community during this music and arts gathering, you know, on, on the morning. It was, I believe, a Sunday morning. And it came to me, the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Okay, how's that go? The idea that when there is darkness, to bring light, right? When there is suffering, to bring happiness. When there is despair, to bring hope. The idea of being a steward, that my role was now as a steward, that, that my role was to deflect the energies of myself and my egoic construct to the energies of others so that they could shine you know, like jewels in the lotus, you know, to, to, to find the up and comings and give opportunity and support so, them and to support them. Yeah. That, that's, that's the vision with the thing. to create something that can support independent artists, independent activists, independent, just independent. When I say independent, I mean like people that are outside of uh, the corporate landscape. So the that that's the vision for uh, Emergence Creative Space too, and how it got started was me realizing that there's a lot of people, lots and lots and lots of people who get these ideas and those inspirations and something gets lost between having the idea and making it a tangible thing. And right. whether that's immediate because they don't feel they could ever do it because they don't know how. They don't know how to find out how to do it. They don't realize how easy it is to come up with a plan. And that just the action of sharing it with people supports it. Even if it's just an idea. Because when, to me, when I share an idea with somebody, it's like giving them a seed and their feedback is like nutrients to that seed. Because it helps me alter, the more I talk about it, 
the more questions I hear, the it, the more it helps me develop it, helps me reaffirm it. You know, it's that visionary yeah, yeah. process. You know, exactly. That, that, um, so the point of the emergence creative space is to provide tools for people such as yourself or anybody else and the tools we provide uh is media access to create podcasts to get on podcasts to have articles written about you to write articles about other people uh to share your goods and services with each other through the directory and through the discount program for the memberships and just create a support system within the community by inviting the community to participate. You know what I mean? It's like the events. Yeah, yeah it's, totally. like, it's like the events we do. We just hold space. We provide the structure. They fill the space. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so they create the kindred. They keep they it. create the kindred network. Their, 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 their kindred recognition creates the development of the seed coming into fruition, building into a flower. And then before, but before it becomes a flower, and this is, this is, I think, also one of the reasons that people get discouraged and don't do it, is we live in a very instant gratification-based society. So when people, it, it's hard to develop new habits for a lot of people. And to make things happen, especially in new projects, before it becomes, before the movements become habitual, before you have the ritual of creating the project, you don't know how to do it. So I want ECS to be a place where people can be inspired, but then also be navigated to where we're all like each other's mentors. And you can share your idea and you can share you can say, hey, I'm stuck. And then you can look through the community and find people that can help you or they can find you and decide to help you. It's going to be structured so that there's energy exchange and the energy exchange can be uh, monetary or it can be in-kind services or it can be for points. Well, we're going to be using this program called MyCred and MyCred takes count of all the movements you do within the website. So if you share a post, you get points. If you post a video, you get points. If you post a poll, you get points. If you log in, you get points. And these points are gonna accumulate and then you can use those points for goods and services that are in the marketplace that the members have their goods. So like, let's say there's somebody has a CD pro CBD product and the CBD product is a hundred dollars cash but we are willing to take 25 percent off in exchange for points and then you transfer those points and then they can use that amount those points to do the same thing with something that they need right you know? or they can yeah. use them to purchase tickets to 3dl events or you know, get advertising in our magazine. Right. And mm -hmm. we're, we're absolutely, Scott. And, and we're witnessing that uh, as we're developing, for example, the Twitch platform. Uh, Twitch is one of our hosts with Earthdance Asheville 2020. So as we're developing this Twitch platform, we're looking at the idea that Twitch is one of those types of shopping centers that you can go and support an artist through a subscription to their page nice, yes. through what they call emotes, right? Through energetic uh, emojis, literally that you buy for cash dollars to be able to support credits throughout a conversation stream using Twitch. It's like the Neo video game to support collaborations and artists showcases. So, I'm really interested to see what happens, like how Twitch develops over the years. Well, what's ha well, Twitch is, is very recent in its infancy. I know. Yet for now, it's recognized as the top dog when it comes to this world of live streaming. And that's why we're utilizing it for the Earth Dance platform and working with developers 
as well with the XR platform as to how to integrate Twitch working with our collaborative interests, you know? So it's, it's really like in an infancy of how we can engage these communications with one another. That's what's up. Communication. Communication is key. You know? Yes, sir. Like, like yes, I said, you asked doing... me about my mantra. So, yes, I oh, was. You, yes. What's oh, you got that? my mantra. Yeah, the same. The prayer of Saint Francis of Assisi. Very good. Do you, do, you, do you know? Do you know what it is? Can you recite it offhand? Right off the top of my head. If I tried, I would fail. And what about your version? My version is that I wish to be a steward in the efforts of others that I'm here as a guiding light, I am not the light. Right. I, I've been supported through collaborative interests on and on for like all my life and I'm grateful for that. And I continue to do so. Very good, very good. Misha, this has been so much fun. This is great. I'm excited about Earth Dance. I'm excited about, hopefully I'll see you in a couple of days, man. I'm gonna be jumping on my truck. Tomorrow's my birthday. I'm going to hang out with my daughter tomorrow night. And then I'm either going to leave early in the morning and drive five hours and camp in Kentucky and arrive in Asheville on Thursday, or I'll be doing the exact same thing, but leaving on Thursday instead. And I'm glad you're, I'm, I'm really happy that you're living in, you're, you're very conscious of making sure that you bring light into your existence. I don't know if you're like me, but I have a natural tendency to, if left unchecked, gravitate towards the darker things. Right. The, Low I, I like the twisted. I like the twisted. Low self-esteem. Just as much as I love, just as much as yeah. I like, I like the things I find in the dark as much as I like the things that I find in the light. But if I'm not focusing on the light, I will naturally gravitate towards you know, so I'm happy that you're you're staying upbeat and positive because that's contagious, man. I'm feeling your energy. This is good. The, the path of the gray Jedi. That's right, man. The gray path. Uh, the path so, of the gray Jedi. Or as Buddha said, walk, <laughs> you know, between the middle. worlds. The yeah, middle. man, the middle path. Exactly. Exactly. You know, don't be afraid to slide and don't be afraid to climb. Yes, sir. Hmm. Right on, brother. Well, this has been awesome. I'm excited. Like I said, I will be there on either Thursday or Friday. You, you offered me the opportunity to help you, and I appreciate that, and I'm honored by that. And I, I'm excited to see what I can do, even if it's just hang out and, you know, watch the shit go down. I should bring a big screen so we can just cast it. <laughs> I have a big screen here, like, right behind me. Okay. Well, I'll bring right. a Google Cast then. And we can videotape <laughs> ourselves, live stream it while we have the opportunity. Remember remember how we did that crazy dance on the, on the hotel? On the yeah, Bellevue yeah, yeah. Hotel? Yeah, I know. It went vi semi-viral. Yeah, man. It awesome. went semi-viral. <laughs> yeah, it was, that was fun. Between you, me, and Christian, we went semi-viral. So, Just, yeah. And we should, we should invite, we can, now we should, we can invite other people. Dude, that's the idea. Scott, I already have JWoww, Magi, Oslan, like reporting live from Washington, D.C. Nice. Occupy D.C., like with his medicine drum that he just picked up. He just came back from, uh, what do you say, Indiana? And he brought his medicine drum. If you were a gratify, you know what I'm talking about. The big one, yeah. Yeah, he brought it, and he's got it. He's taking it to D.C. Nice. Like, in two days. And so he's going to be there during Earth Dance. Leveling on that medicine drum with people outside of the Capitol in the White I House. I really hope that people who hear this plug in to Earth Dance because it is an opportunity to – collectively level this shit up you know it's yes, like we're, we're, stu we're stuck in this in this stagnant <laughs> energy of covid and you know racial tensions and trump politics and 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 child pre uh, predators and you know all this stuff and it's just so heavy this is an opportunity to just s go into a bubble of good 
things happening by good people. And I'm excited. And thank you for creating this. I really, I appreciate you. I know how much work goes into it. I've never done a virtual one, but I can imagine this conversations are going to be the same. You know, the issues are going to be the same. Scheduling has to be worked out. You know, you have to, you have to figure out the plan so that you can share it with other people in such a way that they understand it so that they can participate. And that takes a lot of energy, man. So I, I, I honor your effort and your um, dedication. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Right on, brother. I love yep. you. Have a good I night. And uh, yep. I will see you in a couple of days. All right. So that concludes another episode of Portals Podcast. You can find this episode and others at www.emergencecreativespace.com. And also, just to let you know that this coming Saturday, tomorrow, the 19th, is Earth Dance. So be sure to check out earthdance.tv. And when you get there, check out the Asheville link to find out all the amazing things that Misha and people around the world are bringing together for you. Once again, thank you so much for being here. And I hope we see you again here on Portals Podcast. Mm -hmm.